based on popular search engine requests. Today we're talking about premarital cohabitation and why that leads to bad things in relationships. But first, here's my disclaimer. You can handle the truth strap in if you came here to hear what you wanted to hear and you wanted me to validate something not gonna happen now before we dive into this too far let me make one thing clear I'm not condemning anyone or anyone's behavior I'm gonna lay out some facts I'm gonna give you some opinions of mine at the end I'm gonna leave it to you to discuss your with yourself with your buddies wife whomever what you think about this particular topic today, because this is pretty heavy stuff and very controversial. There's an article on this concept or this topic that was written by contemporary families back in 2014. I'm going to take some time and read parts of that article to you in my nice grandpa voice. In the last 50 years, no, I'm just kidding, I'm not going to read a British accent. In the last 50 years, the percentage of men and women who cohabit before marriage has increased by almost 900%. Today, 70% of women aged 30 to 34 have cohabited with a male partner and two thirds of new marriages take place between couples who have already lived together for an average of 31 months. That's almost three years, gang. These trends are troubling to some because nearly a dozen studies from the 1970s and into the early 2000s showed that men and women who lived together before marriage were far more likely to divorce than couples who moved directly from dating to marriage. In fact, on average, researchers found that couples who cohabitated before marriage had a 33% higher chance of divorcing than couples who moved in together after the wedding ceremony. A 33% higher chance, that's a significant number, gang. Now, the author goes on to say that those trends are changing. And she goes on to state that newer research points to the fact that that 33% may be going down. But be that as it may, her argument is that whether a couple cohabitates or not, it's not about cohabitation as much as it is maturity. And she points out that folks who cohabitate before the age 23 have a higher chance of divorce versus older couples. So if you're a young person at 20 or 21, you're cohabitating, it's not a matter of, well, you're cohabitating, it's a matter of that you're not mature enough yet to know what to look for in a partner. There's some merit to that argument, I, I, I will give it, although there's not one particular piece of the puzzle that I really go between back and forth in terms of my opinion on except for one. This is G-rated, we're gonna keep it G-rated, it's a G-rated channel, but sex is a part of that cohabitation for a lot of couples. So when talking about sex between people who aren't married, there are just tons of opinions about that. Yes, it's right. Yes, it's fine. No, it's wrong. You're going to heck and you know, whatever. It, it's, it's all, you know, everyone has their opinion. But I think we can all agree to some point that there is going to be some negative emotional and mental effect of that outside of the marriage. If nothing else, it creates a false sense of intimacy. Before you're before you're married, so because a lot of a lot of folks use sex to create intimacy, and a lot of people try to have intimacy from sex. So it is what it is. So again, not condemning people, just trying to throw points out there. Now, if you read another article that comes from Paired Life, it discusses that when marriage isn't the primary focus for why couples move in together, things can be problematic. And I read from the article here, it says, the researchers theorize that couples move in together without a clear commitment to the institution of marriage itself. And they end up going through with the nuptials because they already engaged in cohabitation. Well, in addition to getting married without much thought to the marital commitment, living together first as a test causes the couple to focus on issues that present the most problems in the relationship. Therefore, they end up looking for and focusing on the most negative aspects of the relationship. And that's good information to be sure. And in today's culture, you know, we're, we're kind of mirroring what we did back in the late 60s and 70s to a certain degree, this whole, you know, do what feels good mentality. Uh, we've kind of gone back to that. And we went from a very structured environment like, you know, men get married to women and they do this and we do that. And that was all back in, you know, 40s, 50s, 60s, the traditional family values, if you will. And I'm a believer in those. You may not be, and that's fine. Um, but the whole do what feels good comes back into the, the, the forefront now and declaring what's right and wrong. That's not my job to do necessarily in this video, but, but I just want you to, to, to think about 
you know, whether you're the subject of this video or not, it could be a friend, it could be a daughter, it could be a son, whomever. What are the real truths out there? What What is truth in this cohabitation? You know, is it wrong or is it right? Thinking about which styles are going to lend themselves more to this cohabitation and this need for intimacy. We look, you know, on the on the dis profile, we talk about S's and, and I's being people-oriented folks and those people cling to this intimacy. D's and C's not so much. So you may fall on one end of the spectrum or the other, but we won't really know until you have an assessment done. And if you look in the link below, down in the description, you'll see links to our assessments. They're really great for this whole self-awareness piece of discovering who am I? And if you have a partner, maybe you have them take an assessment as well and you get to discover more about them. So who am I? Who are they? And then you guys can start adapting your behavior accordingly. Again, not pointing rights and wrongs, just wanting you to think about things. So as I talk with my glasses here towards the end of this video, what I want you to think about is, do I need an assessment? You gotta discover more about yourselves before you can figure out about others. So hit that link in the description below, go to the assessment page right now for you, spouse, child, mom, dad, whomever. Uh, find out more about yourself and others. See you on the next video.